Welcome back, Misfits. You're tuning into another episode. Another. Sorry, Drew. I was fucking ready to rumble. Stealing my you. intro? Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Uh, welcome back. Another edition of the Misfit Podcast. Good we to are be back here. after a uh, week off. Uh, Drew, where were you? You also have to tell the entire <laughs> Misfit community the video that you just showed me because that's, that's, that's pretty delightful. Uh, I was out in Colorado visiting some friends. We did the first. Uh, trip with the baby um so that was an experience actually went pretty well but he's uh turning into a toddler so that's that's a whole different conversation i think which is honestly a pretty good segue into the video that i just showed hunter um he stood up on his own yesterday for the first time hey. so we were like m- like rushing for maya to get the camera and he stuck his finger in wilbur's ass um and it's in a live photo um, it after. <laughs> so it was like holding on to his hand. <laughs> We're like carrying him over to the sink. By the way, for the listeners and for Jesse, Wilbur is a dog. Uh, no, come on. His neighbor. <laughs> it's his neighbor. It, hang. It's his neighbor. It's <laughs> his <laughs> good friend. It's a nice neighborhood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in, oh, in Carter's defense, his fur, not Carter's fur, Wilbur's fur is white. Carter's got in fur. His, in, his, in his butthole is not white. It, it's a target for sure. And he was facing away from him because he That's wants to face away from him. He doesn't want to get his kind of ear pulled. Or whatever. Wilbur, he Wilbur's, literally just stood up and was like, plunk. <laughs> Wilbur's ass on couch level is about eye level for Carter, too. That's right. Uh-huh. He can't, yeah. can't yeah. fucking so paint a better target. A lot happened within two or three seconds. It was like, holy shit, he's standing up. <laughs> he's like, take a picture. He's checking his oil. <laughs> yeah, he's checking his oil. He's learning all kinds God. of different things. Maybe he'll yeah, be a vet. Man. Maybe we'll call back on this in however long. He's um, going like, to be a veterinarian. <laughs> Rick, Rick cried the taste. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, God. so uh, that's my life right now. <laughs> it's good stuff. Sure, in, be in what you got. Yeah, let's continue this. My, uh, my son, who's about one month older than Drew's son, Sat on the potty and pooped. What? I don't know how I don't know how this was coordinated, but he was on his older brother's traveling plastic potty, pooped, and then proceeded to take one out and pop it into his mouth. So no, yeah. Oh so he had goodness. one of his own nuggets. Yeah. So Aww. luckily I wasn't there because I think I would have I would have died. But it was definitely <laughs> yeah. your son, huh? Yep. Fucking Christ. He wanted to check out what the I think it was probably just a whole raisin that had gone through. Yeah, I was going to say raisinette. Came came back out. <laughs> Chocolate coating. <laughs> Christ, man! Yeah, Fuck. I'm just get I'm getting ready What's to move at the end. I'm getting ready to move at the Who's end of the poop week. Are you eating? It doesn't involve eating shit or touching buttholes. That <laughs> sounds it, like a bad time. May, maybe maybe if it's a, maybe it's a bad enough time, it might turn into that. But uh, they say these things come yeah. in threes, so something's going to happen to one of you guys to to round this out. It's going to be a poop <sighs> story with with Hunter, Ted, or Jesse within the next maybe. Hours. I feel like Ted's always probably got a poop yeah. story. Just just <laughs> queued up just in case. You never know when you'll need it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jesse, for the listeners, we've got Jesse Williams uh, on his way to the CrossFit Games. We'll get more into that. But you're a you're a father of two. You said two youngins, two girls, eight and eleven. That's right. So you're a little We're ahead of these two schmucks stuff for the most part. But I've got, yeah, <laughs> that's what you think. <laughs> oh, <God>. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, but they're just murdering each other these days. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna I can say. Can imagine I what like that's like with yeah. two girls? Eight and eleven-year-old like girls, very different. Uh, Sherb's got WrestleMania with his two boys in his house. Although there's only one participant, really. Just, one person's just getting clotheslined repeatedly, <laughs> just full speed, <laughs> fucking arms stuck out. Take that idiot! Like Lincoln now knows to go down into a squat or to lay on the ground if his brother gets near him. Just like lay on the floor. <laughs> that's the only place I'm safe. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, let's uh, let's get into the podcast today. We are uh, joined by special guest. We have the standard goon squad joined by uh, honorary for the day for sure goon Jesse Williams. Jesse is the owner of CrossFit Switchback. In remind me one more time, Jesse. Kalispell, Montana. Kalispell, Montana. Population of Glacier National Park. Sick. Damn. Um, Son of a gun. Jesse 
Uh, and CrossFit Switchback uh, is programmed by Team Misfit. They follow Team Misfit affiliate programming. And I, myself, and Drew, well, not actually Drew, you emailed the what would what would be the correct email drew at misfitathletics.com the problem is that doesn't exist so uh emailed emailed us with a uh, an email that started off with i'm still a little bit in disbelief i'll save everybody the entire email but uh unexpectedly qualified for the crossfit games in the 45 to 49 division Shucks. after <laughs> just having done team misfit affiliate program and i don't want this to I, I mean, I do, selfishly, a little bit, want this to turn into a, a hour-long ad for Team Misfit Affiliate programming, but ultimately that's not that's not what we're after. We, did, we do want to chat with you, though, Jesse, about all things related to that, and then just kind of the, uh, like, what it's like being on kind of the affiliate owner side, but then finding yourself in this competitive CrossFit kind of like, well, I qualified for the games, like... There's a lot of people who try try to do that forever and don't make it, and to quote accidentally do it. And by accidentally, you told me some of your numbers. You're, it's probably no accident that you qualified, but um, it's pretty fucking cool. So uh, before we get super deep into it, you want to give us your uh, the the rundown on who who is Jesse Williams? When did Jesse Williams get into get into CrossFit, and what what took you from there to here? Oh man, uh, yeah. Quick, run, try try to keep it a quick rundown. Um, and it started. It's been about ten years now. CrossFit um, was working at Nike headquarters, Portland, Oregon. Um, worked on the Metcon, managed the Metcon shoe business um, for quite a while. So got an opportunity. To so that's why they suck now. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wow. Sorry, yeah. I'm fucking, let's a layup guy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Got an opportunity to work with a lot of a lot of amazing athletes uh, back when they had a lot of amazing athletes, um, and got to travel the world, go into CrossFit gyms. Uh, you know, it was interesting back in the day when Reebok sponsored the CrossFit Games. Um, uh, CrossFit was kind of anti Nike. Um, really wouldn't let us play. You know, and there was the old band shoe story. <laughs> Um, but part of that was just not even letting us have an affiliate on the corporate campus, right? So we had an amazing gym, wanted to train, um, but didn't didn't have the opportunity to do that, at least officially with affiliate and coaching, et cetera. So basically a group of us kind of employees at Nike got together and started um, doing CrossFit together. Um, and kind of casually would, you know, meet up 11 noon, kind of open gymmer style, you know, everybody would always be running late uh, from a meeting or something, try to catch up, skip a warm up, uh, or, or get the score to beat for the day and come in and try to one up the, the, the guy that was on time. But anyways, we did that for a while. Um, 2020 moved to Montana, uh, went on a sabbatical, uh, uh, corporate like from Nike, um, kind of reevaluated my life, my priorities, um, selling shoes as being fulfilling or not. Um, I had my girls, had a family, just thinking about our priorities. And uh, we had some friends that had moved out here, been out here several times visiting them and love access to outdoors, loved a smaller town, smaller community vibe. And picked up along with, you know, many people, COVID migrants, and um, picked up and started a new life um, in Montana. Um, that was July of 2020. Um, one of the first things we did, uh, since I wasn't at Nike anymore, kind of had the freedom, and uh, was to join a gym, join our local gym, um, meet the meet some local community people, get involved, um, do CrossFit here, uh, see what was going on in the Flathead Valley. Did that for a few years, and finally opportunity um, arose for uh, my wife and myself to um, start our own gym, go all in. You know, over those few years at that other gym, uh, I was asked, uh, you know, I'm a semi-competitive, I'm an old guy, but you know, I'm okay at CrossFit. I got asked if I'd substitute coach here and there. Uh, didn't have my L1. Um, use it as an opportunity. Had considered it for many, many years, right? But I had gotten to a point where a lot of people were like, well, you don't really need it. Um, and it was a lot of money to dish out just for a weekend of education, you know. But I finally had an excuse. I was like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll get it. Um, 
I'll get it so I can coach and help out at the gym. Um, had a good crew there. I wanted to do what I could, contribute to the gym. So got my L1, started coaching, and um, you know when I moved here, we started side gigs. I had a little bit of property management, uh, managing vacation rentals. Um, but a lot of weeks went by after I started coaching where uh, those coaching moments, I'm sure you guys are familiar with, but those coaching moments um, were the most fulfilling you know, days and hours or minutes of my week. Um, I look back at the week and like that was what I was thinking about, not not the other stuff. And so after a few years, like I said, opportunity arose for us to open our own gym, go all in. Um, it was all in for me. So this past October, we opened a gym, Switchback CrossFit, found an area that was um, in the valley. Um, there's several gyms in the valley, but there was an area downtown Kalispell that was, um, you know, just needed a gym, didn't have anything close. So we um, spent almost a year looking for a place, but finally got it opened up. It's an old truck shop, perfect old box. Uh, spent my summer remodeling um, the gym, and that was a solid two, three months of not working out at all. Um, uh, basically spending 16 hours a day, wear my whoop, had my steps, getting 14, 15,000 steps in a day, <laughs> 19, 20 strain every day, long days. I'm out of the gym, um, just didn't have the gas to keep training those couple months. Um, and then got the gym open, you know, and had already selected Misfit Affiliate Programming, um, just something that I tested it out. The second we started looking for a location and knew that we wanted to go all in, um, I knew it was going to be you guys. Um, several reasons, transparency, mostly transparency and coaching the coaches, you know. Um, good good communication about training phases what the focus is you know even like come crossfit open game season it's just the you know you guys doing the workouts the open workouts being the guinea pigs for everybody and de doing the debriefs it just is so helpful um, not just as an athlete but to coaches too that are trying to coach other athletes within the gym so i'd already selected that as soon as we started looking for spot like i said it took us a year but i was like well you know i'll get on the programming and start going through it and seeing if, if there's anything in the that i'd actually need to modify change in the day-to-day -day programming based on our equipment you know our space etc our membership um but like I said, I took last summer off while I was getting the gym ready. Got the gym open in October. Um, it's always been super important for me to um, follow the programming, you know, as coaches. The co I, I, you know, we require that our coaches follow the programming. It's not open gym, um, do whatever programming, make up your own programming. Um, it's always been super important that we lead by example. Um, we're selling a product, and programming is a big piece of that product as a gym owner. Um, and so I think it's just not really genuine of us to try to sell something that we don't believe in and aren't doing ourselves. So anyways, October rolls around. I'm opening a gym. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I'm going to do class programming. And, and one of the reasons, you know, affiliate programming was awesome is that there is that competitor extra. There is enough to get you well out of the open. Even the old days of, you know, 10% or even that, you know, there was enough there to get you past the open. Um, Certainly now that it's top 25%, there's, there's plenty there, um, should be plenty there with consistency and hard work to get you past that. But, you know, uh, I was like, I'll do that, you know. Like, I have an athlete that was targeting the games, a master's athlete that was targeting um, the games this year. He's in 35 to 39. Um, great athlete. My energy went towards him. But I know that, you know, I just I volume, you know. Like, I expect to have to train up some volume to do some extra work to go above and beyond to qualify for the games. It's, it was a joke of mine always that, you know, it, it went from a, uh, basically a joke amongst our, my training crew, my Nike training buddies. Um, it was a joke. It was like that we would kid each other, talk shit to each other and say, oh, you, you know, training for the games. If somebody did an extra piece, you know, or whatever, it was like, oh, games, you know, games, whatever the next year was. Games 25, you know, you, you're going to go for it, big guy, tough guy. We talk shit, you know, that's, that's so much fun. Sounds familiar. Uh, right? Um, so, you know, it went from a joke and, you know, a couple of years go by here and there where, you're, you know, I'm, myself, I'm creeping into age group online qualifiers, top 200, you know, 120th, start doing a little bit better. Um, you know, and then it's like, well, maybe one day, maybe one day, you know, if I, if I, I know what it takes and I'm kind of on that cusp, maybe one day if I put in the extra training, put in the time, put in the work, um, to then the shock. Of and so you, yeah, it's just like it being, sorry to yeah. cut. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry for rambling. Sorry, Jesse. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's okay. Uh, I was just trying to confer, kind of 
clear up the timeline here. Basically, yeah. like you were last summer, summer of 2023, you spent most yeah. of that remodeling your affiliate, and you started yeah. like getting back into training in October ish. Yeah. So some between yeah. from October through February, March, like yeah. we got into good enough physical condition to advance through open quarterfinals, semifinals. Is that accurate? Totally. Yeah. And as far as like just time out of affiliate programming, I'd, I started actually in October of 22 um, was around the time we had decided we wanted to open a gym. Um, I'd been on the, the local gyms and, you know, the other local gym I was at, I was on their programming uh, for those prior two years. Um, I kind of peaked out during uh, lockdown, you know, I was putting in doubles during lockdown. Uh, <laughs> um, peaked out and then those next couple of years on a, on a local, you know, local programming, box programming, um, saw my results kind of declining. There's a lot of other factors, right? I mean, there's a big move in there, some lifestyle changes. Um, but, uh, and, but, yeah. And how once much knew, of the programming we were, open, were you... I got on affiliate programming in October 22, and that very first open, that open 23, was the turnaround. It was like there was a dip, and then... You know, I'd started doing math sessions, started doing affiliate programming, knowing that we were going to eventually open a gym. And um, so that was that was a little bit of, like, hope and optimism, you know, in the training. And then, yeah, summer, this past summer, took off. And then back on the programming after a few months off um, in October. Yeah. And how much of the – so for, for anybody not familiar, the affiliate programming contains either, like – it's either within your one hour class, it's either going to be a just a lifting session, just a conditioning session, or on occasion, two things, a lift and a conditioning piece in like one hour. More often than not, it's just one of those two things. And then there's always a, there's a daily competitor extra. Um, how much of the affiliate programming, you know, as, you know, were, were you, were you actually executing? Starting in this October, m- m- yeah. Once you, once you once you kind of really got back a into it, pieces, you know, um, I'm old, dude. Like you know, a couple of days here and there, I feel my body, so get a little tweak here or there. And um, one of the things I'd say I've learned as I'm older is honestly to not avoid um, the work. You know, if my back's tender, sore, hips tender, Watch sore, it. it's not to avoid it. It's to you know. <laughs> sounds obvious you know for anybody that's in the coaching world it's like scale it you know like just just actually move through it empty barbell just like motion is lotion all that good stuff um but for the most part you know i was probably doing 85 90 95 percent um every week i was motivated right like now i'm a gym owner i'm here every day <laughs> i don't have any excuses to not go to the gym i'm at the gym already <laughs> uh, i'm sure shit better do stuff if i'm here you know um <laughs> and it's, it's part, like, the motivation was just, like, doing what everybody's doing. We're trying to build a community, right? So it's, like, either setting the bar, showing people what a target time was, you know, like, or just joining in on the fun, aka pain, you know? How many, uh, do, do you ever have, did you ever come across an instance where members are like trying to jump in and join you kind of in that they're like, oh, coaches, you know, coaches doing this extra training piece. I'm going to do that as well. You kind of talked about the importance of leading, leading by example between you and your coaches. Uh, did you ever have an experience where that not necessarily backfired, but it's like, they're, they're certainly people who don't need to be doing that competitor extra especially if you're just you know here for health and wellness and and just to try to you know live a healthier life you have maybe a slightly different goal or maybe you just have more time that's available to to dedicate to training being at the gym and but did you ever have athletes who who were like yeah i'm gonna tag along with coach here dude i like i my general rule with them is the more the merrier always like i'd always rather be working out with somebody i try to attend as many of my classes as possible so you know we're hiring like that's one of the reasons i want to hire so i can attend my good plan. classes learn from my other coaches um and be with my members like working out with them not you know separately not, i don't want to be a lone wolf you know um i've known those at the very tip top of the games you know field um and I like there's just 
it's cool. That's a sacrifice that they pay um, or make, you know, to be there. But that's not what I want. Um, that's not what fulfills me. So, anyways, more the merrier. Um, have I had a problem? You know, honestly, I think more often than not, um, and maybe it's just our membership or the the stage of it, early stages. But I feel like for the most part. I teach a lot of like account, uh, athlete accountability, athlete responsibility to know your own body, feel your own body. Um, and I just, I haven't had those. I, I know the athlete you're talking about that's kind of like a little bit too aggro, too much volume for the most part. I, I just, if, if and when that has happened, it's just scale them, you know, dial them back. Um, a lot of times the extra will be weightlifting, right? So it's like, it's a matter of dialing back percentages or being realistic with what our maxes are. Um, not the we old lost you again, Jesse, if you can hear us. <laughs> I can't hear you. Am I back? We just missed a All little. Right. So one thing, Jesse, um, that I don't I don't believe is a um, You know, I was just Sorry, I think we're I think we're stepping over each other a little bit. Um I just I don't think it's a coincidence that head coach at Misfit Gym Portland head coach at Misfit Jim Wyndham, these two gentlemen here, um, kind of set the tone in a lot of ways that you're, you're explaining. Um, and while to be the head coach and sort of run the show at a gym, I don't think you need to be at a super high level. Um, if you are and you do it within a way that fits in the confines of the affiliate, I think it's very powerful. Um, so again, we're looking at volume, you know, more is not better, better is better. So if you're following the affiliate programming, sprinkling in the competitor extra, just very similar to what these two guys do here. Um, I think there's, there's something about what you can convince people to do. You can show them, um, you know, obviously we can stand at the whiteboard and we can really kind of try to, you know, put the lessons out there, but people are going to learn or be motivated in different ways. And um, for, for both of our gyms here, we have that example. Um, and it sounds like you're able to set that example there. Do you find, you know, sort of to, to go a little bit more along what Hunter was saying, do you find it to be easier to convince people to stay within those, you know, sort of reins because you do it yourself and you have success? Oh, dude, yeah, like, um, <laughs> the, the, the cliche, crossfit cliche, intensity over volume has been huge. Um, I, that, that's been really huge. I think even though I saw some of my open results, you know, game season results decline on the, the fil- like prior box programming, um, it was nice to deload. I realized how much too much volume I was doing and lack in quality, man. Like my, my whole thing with everybody, newest athletes to advanced athletes here is to pace yourself. Like we talk a lot about pacing. Um, and you know, I like the stimulus guidance you guys give for sure. Um, our goal is to keep moving. You know, I realized how many times I would use too heavy of dumbbells or, I don't know, I, whatever it was, like just the the volume of the workout itself, too many rounds, a 30 minute EMOM or something. Um, and really half of it, 15 minutes of 30 minutes, which is garbage training, right? Like just beating up my body and I was standing around half of the time or whatever, right? Not hitting my minutes. Um, so that, yeah, just executing well, um, and being in tune with the body, you know, man, you know, I think that's, that's a lot of, I think, what my change has been personally in the last couple of years is listening to my body more. Um, definitely prioritize sleep. Sleep's been a really huge one. Uh, my girls are older now. <laughs> so, you know, like, that helps. it's just huge. <laughs> sure. It, it does. Sure, <laughs> like, I mean, so good. That not helps. even joking. Like, it's, it's awful, you know? Like, you just can't <laughs> you live with these little humans and you can't really keep them from waking you up at two in the morning that they had a nightmare or want to crawl in bed with you or got to just eat yeah, whatever. Them in their rooms. Just start Sorry, screaming, <laughs> screaming bloody murder in the middle of the night. Like there's only so much you can do about that. Right. So, <laughs> but, um, but sleep, you know, nutrition and just being in tune with the body. Like, um, and I think along with that is, uh, something I've been coaching a lot is just, the uh, almost an 80, 20 rule. Right. So, um, the idea of training versus competing from day to day and that 80% of our days, you know, let's say four out of five, five out of six of our day should be at a training pace. We're not competing every day. I don't 
most days I don't want people rolling around on the floor, especially if you come in feeling like shit, you're kind of just like slogging through a workout. Last thing I want is you to be like pushing it so hard that you're rolling around at the end. It's, it's probably doing more harm than good at that point. So we talk about it, like being in tune with your body. If you feel great, you want to fucking send it, send it, you know, like, but your body, like listen to your body. Um, (laughs) <laughs> the caveat being it, it doesn't always mean like how you wake up in the morning or how you feel mm. before you start moving. Um, listen to your body after the warm up, maybe, you know, if we have a lifting and conditioning piece of like during lifting, how are you feeling? You know, like you still feel slow and, and everything's, you know, rusted up, you know, um, or are we feeling good? But anyways, just being in tune. Yeah. Executing with quality, like, you know, follow the programming, <laughs> you know, like I'm a, uh, a little bit of a stickler about that, you know, not scaling or modifying things that you just don't like. Um, you know, like just doing extra pieces for the sake of doing extra pieces, that kind of stuff. Yeah. One, um, yeah, one thing uh, we got on the volume versus intensity page, uh, naturally versus my question that I had, but that was a huge one. I'm curious to know, like, it, from October of last year through like the competitive season, that's not a very, that's not a long time. Um, and to tell anybody to, to say like, you know, yeah, Jesse did it. You can too. Like, I'm not going to say that. That's, that's probably not realistic. Um, you've been doing CrossFit for a little while. Again, you told me, you know, a, a, a 45 to 49 master with a, you know, a 235 snatch and a 315 clean and jerk, you know, those things don't, aren't necessarily, uh, like those don't just happen over the period of, of five months, not to say that they did, but I guess my question is like, what do you attribute going from, I just spent two months building a CrossFit gym, not exercising to, Oh shit! It's the middle of semifinals. I better listen to what Drew has to say in the Discord Masters chat. Oh shit! I accidentally qualified for the CrossFit Games because again, we don't like to. It's certainly not to belittle that because of how you know hard people work to to qualify for that. But there's got like, what do you attribute that to? Is it the right the right things got programmed? Is it just the fact that you know how to look at and read the workout and apply intensity when you're supposed to and pull rein it back when you're not? Is it I listen to my body really well and like what what the fuck, Jesse? Yes, Hunter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All those things you said. No, yeah. um, you know, I think you have to like if we're talking about competition, like just being competitive, I think you have to um right, we have to be solid at everything you can't not have something so you know it's been a long time but i've like made sure that i have everything you know um muscle up handstand walks you know what a like double unders like yeah ha- i don't want to say i don't have weaknesses you always have a weakness it's always relative to what's better than other stuff but i don't have any glaring holes so that's one um you know strength is a buy-in always you know so um, luckily I like weightlifting and strength and, you know, Olympic as well as the other stuff. When I took the months off, um, you know, like it's not, <laughs> let me just be clear. Like the remodeling was not, uh, supervising a remodeling project or. Yeah, no, no, no. To, I, I was know. hauling. Yeah. Hauling. <laughs> we know how it goes. <laughs> we get it for through, sure. You know, not not the fifty but it's, pound bags of concrete, whatever the big yeah. The but you're, it's are. still not a you know it's still not seven by one back squat. It's not you know it's totally. not one mile repeats. I I totally we we just built a rig. Granted, that was a weekend, not a month, not two months. But I mean, these yeah, guys have I, done that multiple times. I think there so, is something to be said yeah, about hurt. getting steps in and like moving, just moving. I was getting a lot of steps in, you know. And I don't know if I don't know how much of it was zone two versus like zone one, you know, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, right, but, like, I I think there's something to be said. The biggest thing I noticed when I came back from that time off was definitely my strength, right? Like, you know, uh, back squat numbers, leg strength just in general. Like, the weightlifting was off, you know? They say it takes the longest to lose, but it takes the longest, you know, it takes the longest to get, takes the longest to lose. But I had enough time off that I had definitely lost some. Um, So I was prioritizing that. It came back quicker than I thought. 
Uh, my conditioning was better than I thought it was coming back again. I don't know that, you know, I'm half joking about the zone two and the lugging around concrete sacks of concrete and stuff, but, um, my conditioning, well, it goes fast and comes fast, but it was, it was like day one, day two of back. I was like, Oh, this didn't suck nearly as much as I thought it was going to. Um, it wasn't like I'd, it, it, I've had vacations where I was off for a week where it felt worse the first day back. Right. Then, than that first day, yeah. um, back I, um, you know, I think the, the learning I had from the prior season, uh, math has really been a big deal for me. Um, you know, that was, I, if I had a, a athlete weakness, it's the longer workout stuff. Um, aerobic capacity just in general. So I've got, I've, I've got a decent foundation of strength and decent gymnastics. I've got short arms, you know, like, so I got, I got my little T-Rexes. So <laughs> like handstand pushups, things like that have always been excellent for me. Um, that was cool that it was pro. Yes. It was cool that it was programmed in quarterfinals and semifinals. Um, although no handstand walking, kind of a bummer, but, uh, but the math has always been a Agreed. And just so spending, making sure like, <laughs> making sure that uh you know i got my math session in and and whether that was active recovery or putting in you treating it as extra work i was making sure that i was trying to get math in um both last year and this year and and last year was the one that that was the eye opener i never really done it before but i was like uh kind of makes sense this is a weakness longer stuff once i actually did it i was like yeah it's not that bad you know i used to think to get aerobic capacity i just had to suffer a long time right um you know i had to suffer for an hour and like well Zone two, like, I mean, yeah, you're sweating. You're kind of breathing hard, but like, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but it's not the worst either. Like it's, you know, there's much more painful workouts than a, than a math session. So I started enjoying them and I saw huge results on short workouts and long workouts, um, last open. So I made sure that that's what I did going into this season. Back to the intensity and volume and suffering stuff, man, like, you know, was, I thought everything was going great and I felt good going to the open and then I kind of got sick and really the competitions kind of messed me up this year, you know. Um, the open, it was just stressful, right? It's like I'm a gym owner and um, first open and want want to make it amazing experience for everybody and focus on everybody and judging all weekend and all the stuff you guys I'm sure know plenty about. But, um, but it's, it's, it, you thank goodness it was only three weeks, you know, personal as an athlete still would prefer four, uh, three weeks, much better as an owner for sure. Um, but I was like, not yes. feeling well, just drained, <laughs> stressed, exhausted after it. Um, didn't feel at the top of my game coming out of the open, um, quarterfinals happened. Um, and it was the first workout, um, got a little tweak in the shoulder. I think that was at, uh, well, uh, <laughs> What was the first workout at quarterfinals? Rolling snatch? Yeah. It, it, oh, anyways, quarterfinals? Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it rolling snatch step up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, power yeah. snatch wrong. And yep. step up. Yeah, the, the infamous. Yeah, step up. Yeah, I was going to say, up. we know what the step first up workout was. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what the workout is. Um, I, was, I was just tweaked. Honestly, I didn't even know if I'd finish the whole weekend. I thought about not doing workout two, three, and four. Um, and my buddy that I told you is shooting for the games this year, basically. So I did that on um, Wednesday night when I, when I got announced. Like I did that first workout. Woke up Thursday and was like, had some nasty pinched nerve shoulder stuff going on. Wasn't sure if I was going to do the rest of the, the weekend. Um, Saturday morning, he talked me into at least doing that second one, <laughs> which was uh, burpees, black, burpees and wall balls, Ow. right? Is that hard to convince you to talk, get you to do that? Because of all the workouts, uh, that's the one I'd be the of, hardest convincing Of all to do. workouts, of all workouts, to be like, oh, just Fuck get it done, workout. you know? Right? Uh, but he did, and I was super grateful for it. And I, and I just got it done. You know, I didn't know even if it was a good score or not. Turns out it's decent, and it got me, you know, I, actually after the workout, the, mo- the whole moving through some pains and tweaks, like, felt better after the second workout after doing it. And, um, and turned out third and fourth were kind of more in my wheelhouse anyways, with gymnastics and some stuff, right? Uh, handstand push-ups and muscle-ups. Um, so once I saw where I was sitting, I was halfway through, I was like, eh, I got to at least finish it. So did that. Um, that clean and jerk kind of messed, kind of messed me up. Um, collarbone, had a little collarbone issue. Didn't lift between quarterfinals and semifinals. Um, didn't weight lift at all. Um, so, you know, like just try to stay fit, do my math sessions, make sure I was kept my aerobic capacity and my intensity up and tried to heal up as best I could coming into that weekend. 
And, I think the you know, I think the math stuff is a really important like high point here for the listener. Whether you're an affiliate athlete or you know a, a coach athlete or just an you know someone trying to get better, um, we have we have members every once in a while. They ask about it, and like you see in the affiliate programming, like it's in there every Thursday. Um, I suspect that because people see it copied and pasted, it's the exact same thing that's in there every Thursday that they're just like, oh, yeah, it, that's that thing that I don't do. Uh, what's tomorrow's <laughs> workout? And it's like, it's like that's fine. Right. It's a it's a time commitment. And for for your average everyday person, like, I don't know, I, I could you could you would, you could argue that it's even more important for that person. But maybe it's not maybe it's just not feasible to go into the gym and just do that one hour, 75 minute total session. But like the number of people that we've had say like that moved the needle. Like if they're the, the one thing, like not a clickbait fucking YouTube title, but the one thing to improve your fitness, like it's ha- It's really hard to beat that as far as bang for your buck goes, just building time on that, you know, what, whether it's a machine or running in that zone two sort of range has for, and I, I would like, I'll, I'll be another example for that, that moved the needle for me so much more in my fitness than any other like single exercise or single like training style that that we have and like yeah i think it, i think it's just impo- really important that you like you're not just cl- skipping over that copy and paste job on thursday because when we talked on the phone i was like how much of the competitor program do you do and i was specific i was like including thursday math and saturday accessory work because i think that's another one that people probably just kind of kind of shrug off but it's like there's a reason there's a reason it's in there like it's part of what rounds out the program as it in its entirety especially for an athlete who wants to be competitive and competitive is relative to you as an individual but it is still part of what you know we think is necessary and askable for you know an affiliate athlete who wants to treat it slightly more than just the place I go to work out one hour a day. Yeah, I think it's actually like extra important for good and competitive athletes um, because back to that whole training versus competition and like slowing down to speed up like stuff, man, like when you wear a heart rate monitor, I think it's forcing some athletes to slow down. I used to think that to be more competitive, I just had to suffer more. You know, like I had to suffer more or have a higher pain tolerance. And I think the math sessions, the benefit and improvement, I I was suffering less, right? I was like slowing down, doing slow work. um, And after a couple months of consistently doing them, I was, I was more present in a workout that sucked, you know, like a, like a really painful workout. I had, all of a sudden I had gears. I had a second wind, I had gear. Like it was either before it was either red line or not red line, you know, and there was no orange, there was no middle ground, there was no flirting with it. And after math sessions, I feel like I became so present, like I could, I could flirt with a red line and immediately be aware that I was like, uh oh, and then like take an extra breath or just slow down the tiniest bit and come and reel it back in. And I never had that before. And I think it, that's the sl- like, yeah it's just been really good and for a competitive athletes that always just want to go as fast as possible i think that's the that's they're just not getting that day in day out aerobic um improvement that you get with the math sessions yeah i I had uh, had an early athlete actually like sorry like i had an early athlete it's like he um (laughs) he's a very competitive guy and he'd wear the heart rate monitor and he'd basically he wouldn't even do the math. He would, he would like add 10 uh, beats per minute to his target. Right. It wasn't just what <laughs> do he did on his stage, but just it was like add 10 because it, because it felt too easy and he felt like he wasn't getting a workout in. And I sweat, he did it. He did it basically last open season when I was doing it, he was doing it that way and basically got no benefit out of it. Wasn't sold on it, <laughs> whatever this year talked him into it and i was like hey man you get like do do something differently like stop doing the same thing get you know same results if you want different results you gotta do something different just just do it the right way sure shit like gets results from it you know like and it's like wow like you know like it's it's really working for me so um so it's a really effective tool especially when you bring in the metrics the heart rate like of just like forcing an athlete that might not otherwise want to slow down 
to get into the right training zone um, to be able to do that. I really like the mindfulness thing you had mentioned about it. I think the the mindfulness of how you should feel in a workout is a really important thing of math, and I just think also teaching the lesson that like intensity can be more than just your heart rate screaming, your muscles burning. Like Intensity of focus is a huge part of what needs to be in training, and I think it's a lesson you can pass on to someone in math. It's a really easy way for someone to experience that without like finding that near-death you know, zone five type of vibe or like going for a max set of pull-ups, like muscle burn kind of vibe. I think it gives you an opportunity to teach how workouts should feel in an environment that's, you know, relatively friendly and be like, Hey, you don't always need to be, you know, puking in the front of the gym for it to, for it to be an effective workout. And breathing too, right? Like, I mean, so many, like so many of us that do CrossFit, we like it because it's data, it, it, like it's measurable, right? It's data, it's science. There's a whole science to it. And, staring at a monitor um and your heart rate at the same time and being able to for an hour plus like see what happens to your heart rate when you take an extra breath or you breathe in for four, you do some box breathing when you're you know when you're like getting too high um it really transferred to workouts of like oh shit i'm flirting with red line i better take that one extra breath and it will and you can like almost start feeling your heart rate come down it's crazy and before i had no way less awareness i knew i like needed some help breathing um i'd done some nasal breathing type stuff before and more more i just felt like that was like how much can you suffer or get it like be okay with the drowning feeling and less like controlling your heart rate Drew, you're Drew, muted. You're muted. and i'm back um there are a lot of athletes who want to and this is like a, a kind of a former traditional sports athlete who want to get to semifinals of the crossfit games so they can show off the fact that they like handstand push-ups or heavy snatches or clean and jerks whatever it may be and i'm looking at your scores here and you went from 107th in the open to 78th in quarterfinals to 34th in semifinals and an athlete like that who has those skills that are really hard to come by is like the poster child for zone two type work, right? Like, can I bring this back end into the equation? You know, can I get my breathing and can I learn how to do how to flush waste um, and to control my heart rate and things of that nature? Um, and a lot of times that's the type of person who won't do it or won't back off, you know, <clears throat> and you know, they'll add or they're, they're right at 180 minus their age. And if they're not, you know, they're on the C2 bike and they're at 110 RPMs, you know, trying to get into that, into that spot. So again, I just think it's really cool that you can provide these examples because the, the literature there's, there's just, when we bring a lot of type A personalities in, we bring a lot of meatheads in to the equation and it's like if we get too sciency in those scenarios, it can be really hard to, to get people to follow along. But with you, you get to set that example and you're even willing to say like, hey, sit next to me. You know, we're going to be on the bike now for whatever it is, 90 minutes. And you're going to see, you know, you probably wouldn't say I'm going to whoop your ass in the Metcons. You might want to um, go at the same heart rate as me. But, you know, you can get that, you know, sort of show and tell type of situation, which I think is so powerful, especially early on in a community with you guys just starting last year. I think one other thing you mentioned, Jesse, that is super important for, again, athletes, if you're coaching an athlete who's asked you about it, the zone two stuff, you talked about like you basically had two gears. It was like, I'm going slow because I have to, or I'm going full send. And for, I think for Sherb and I, we've talked about this a lot for a lot of affiliate athletes. That's, that's fine. Uh, in a way you have to learn, you have to learn what is too far. You know, you have to touch your hand to the hot stove to realize you got to look out for it the next time, but you have to do that. You have to, as an affiliate athlete, you have to kind of earn your stripes. You have to go full send so that you limp through the third round of a three round workout. Cause you went out too fast. But, um, like, I think that's necessary. And again, for somebody who is doing CrossFit three to five days a week, like, one of those being a math would be terrific, but I want I want that athlete to get their intensity. I want them to get their lifting in. I want them to there, – there's a lot of other things that I want them to do as well. But when you're trying to make that next step, 
whether it's just to be a better version of your affiliate athlete self uh, or trying to step into that competitor realm, like the zone two provides exactly that. It's the, it's the gears. It's the idea that um, in order to, in order to pace a workout correctly, you have to have the capability of holding a specific of doing what you say you're going to do. Right. If it's somebody who's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go out slow in this 20 minute AMRAP. It's like, you you have to you have to have the capacity to the physical capacity to go out slow but sustain that output. Um, their most affiliate athletes just don't have that. They don't. They're not fit enough to have a gear between full send death and limp across the finish line death. That gap in between is something that takes a lot of time to develop. And I think that zone two work is a really good bridge for that. It just opens up like you said, kind of a gearbox for an athlete to be like, oh, I can actually slow down here and know that by slowing down here, I'll be able to speed up later in the workout. You can actually modulate that within a workout, whereas most, you know, just kind of recreational CrossFitters or your typical athlete, they just don't have that, the number of hours logged, the training hours logged, the awareness, or necessarily the capacity to to adjust kind of from third gear to second gear or up to sixth gear when I need to or, or you know full send to the finish so it I gives think you a chance to us it gives you. you a chance to to have that conversation with athletes and build more trust and rapport with them like hey if you actually try to go a little slower to the game this workout you're gonna beat so and so in class and I know that's been bothering you that you're like why do I always fall apart at the end of the workout and it's like hey try this today on the row Row 10 seconds slower than you think, but transition like a madman. And you have that opportunity to, to teach someone that like transitions can be as valuable as trying to go as hard as you can on the rower in round one and two, and it's a 20-minute AMRAP. Like, I think it gives you an opportunity to, to, to demonstrate your coaching prowess and build that rapport with athletes. Because like we've talked about this, that sometimes we don't want to give the answers to the test at the beginning of the workout to some athletes, especially when they're brand new. It's just like try really hard and see what happens because you're fucking brand new and I mean, you showing up and doing the workouts, a good, a good dose of fitness for you, regardless of what speed you go at, and if you limp home. But then you have those athletes that have been around for a while, and you can just continually see them blow up in the middle of the thing. And you're like, hey, try this today. And they have that win. And then they quickly realize, like, oh, I, I can pace stuff. And pacing does work sometimes. And Coach does know what he's talking about. Maybe I'll listen next time. You know, math is awesome. Um, I, I don't know how unique it is to our membership or this area, but, you know, I, I guess one of the reasons why I even got interested in the first place or the realization for me was going out um, in the outdoors with someone who visually I would look at and be like, oh, they're not in great shape, right? Um, carrying around some extra weight, don't necessarily go to the gym, work out, couldn't sprint, probably couldn't back squat anything, and going out and covering 10,000 vertical foot change and a 20-mile hike and they're feeling better than I am at the end of, you know, the day. Um, they're moving more consistently and steadily. And here I am thinking I'm hot shit or I'm like ready for this because, you know, back squat 410 or whatever. Right. And I can like crush Fran. And it's like, well, it turns out in the real world, you're out hunting, you're out hiking, you're out like just moving and on your feet for long periods of time. I wasn't building that gems. <laughs> yeah. Building gems. Right. And so that was one of the realizations for me. And it's a good sell, like selling point for me too, to try to sell people on the concept of math. It's like, yeah, for the competitives, it's developing gears and being better, short workouts, long workouts, just aerobic capacity, feeling better, not dying. But also like just in the real world, if you like to be outside on your feet and active for long periods of time, I think that it's really helpful too. I don't know if you've heard us <clears throat> talk about the, the idea of taking your medicine before Jesse, but it originally was very much about once a week doing a full send. Um, just the, the ability to, you know, sort of, you know, you, you take your spoon full once a week and everything will be better. But the idea has evolved over time, especially at the affiliate level, where it's like we cannot pander to, um, you know, a single member or a group of members or what's cool right now because everyone's medicine is different. So that was your medicine. You were out on the hike with them, and then you can you can give them all kinds of different brands of medicine if you can get them into the gym. Um, and that kind of brings me to a question about you being in tune with the methodology. 
Sherb and I have been writing programming together for God knows how long, over 10 years. And we noticed that the affiliates around us early on were very much pandering to this idea of, and I actually got the idea when you were talking about the 30 minute imam of like sweat fest, like basically like CrossFit and orange theory mixed together. And then if I can get you on the most restrictive calorie deficit paleo diet possible, I can get you to look a certain way, but then you go to a local comp and you come in last and you're pissed. You don't understand what's going on. Um, and that's one thing for better or worse. Um, good on the programming side, maybe not as good on the business side. We're not pandering to fucking anybody. That's just not us, right? So my question is, you got into the game a little bit later than us, but you seem to have a very good grasp of the methodology and of the breadth of what all this stuff is. It is skill. It is lifting. It is nutrition. It's listening to your body. It's you know different energy systems and whatnot. What would you attribute that to being able to, to come into the game when it, we call them Larry's, you know, kind of your old school CrossFit methodology people. Maybe they have Pukey the clown in the pyramid painted over their left shoulder. Um, sure do. What do you attribute you staying true to the methodology to? Oh man, it's a big question. Um, it works. It's easy to stray. Know? Like it, it works. Um, I'm a big believer in it. Uh, we have fitness in a hundred words, um, like lasered into some metal wrap on some of our posts. Um, it starts with nutrition, you know, like literally like one of the big things for me recently has just been like, if you look at fitness in a hundred words, the first sentence is nutrition. It's not any of the other stuff. Right. Um, how do I stay true to CrossFit method? It, it, like it just, it works. It's fun. Like, you know, it's measurable. It's, it's, um, I've done orange theory, you know, like part of the things, I don't know if I mentioned this, my other job, like my, my, my old job, my old life. Like I, I wasn't just CrossFit. I was the training fitness category. So that was part of, you know, the privilege I had was to again, travel around the world. I got to see a lot of CrossFit zones. I also got to see a lot of fitness concepts, um, mm. you know, uh, my wife did, uh, orange theory before she did CrossFit. I mean, what, while we were married and, um, so, and I, you know, I would occasionally, I've done it. So we drop in, we travel around, try out new things, Barry's boot camp, orange theory, whatever the new hot thing was in New York or LA. Um, and, and I always came back to CrossFit cause again, it worked. It's measurable. It's, um, scientific, it's fun, you know, it's turned sport. Like the great thing, like wearing Nike, it's like there is a power in sports. Um, sport is a beautiful thing. Competition is a beautiful thing. The, you know, thrill of victory, agony of defeat, the, the excitement that comes out of it, those, the learnings, team sports, whatever it may be, like there's a superpower in sport. And CrossFit turned fitness into a sport. Nobody else really has done that. You know, Orange Theory kind of like more gamified it, right, with splash points and, you know, getting into the I fucking suck at Orange Theory. Whatever. I can't get my heart rate high enough. <laughs> Fuck really? Orange Theory. I go there and get, I get last place every time. I, my wife had a membership. Sherb has an for a elephant while. heart, by the way. Yeah, his his zone <laughs> I, I two go is there 90, my, 90, RP, 90 beats per minute. Fucking <laughs> maxing out my heart rate. I'm dying in the place, dry heaving, and I'm at like 140 BPMs, and I'm literally in last cl- place, last place. And I know the points <laughs> don't matter, <laughs> but I'm not going back. I'm not Dude, fucking I would win. be so good at Orange Theory. I'd be in. <laughs> I'd be at one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I walk averaged in, you'd be the winner. You'd own the half Murph. Yep. <laughs> that reminds me of one of my first Beautiful. math sessions, dude. Like, I had the whoop, right? And, like, that's all I had. I didn't have the chest strap yet. I'm on a C2 bike like this, and I'm, I'm pedaling, and I'm pedaling, and I'm at, like, 110, and I'm supposed to – I'm already past warm-up. I'm supposed to be, you know, whatever, 135. Right this time, it's probably 140. But uh, – but I, and I'm turning the damper up, and I'm fucking huffing and puffing. And, uh, you know, I basically do the whole session and I'm die Like, I'm just, it was one of my first ones. So I'm like, I didn't really know what to expect other than what I had read, but I was like, man, that sure hurt a lot more than it seemed like you was supposed to. Turns out like <laughs> this, like with, with your hands, like basically I also have ray nods or I don't know, bad circulation in my fingers. Changes the blood um, pressure some, in the area. I talked to yeah. some buddies that yeah, that pressure on your wrist and it'll it'll plummet right. So the next time I compared the two and this was running like 
20 or 30 lower, you know, and sure not sure said, I'm sure I was running like 150, 160 the whole time with uh-huh. damper at seven, eight, you know, 80 RPM at, at a eight damper. Um, but yeah, yeah, that reminds me of your orange theory. That's <laughs> you're not going to win that game. I was not winning math session that day. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> So you had a basis of comparison, which is a huge part of it. Like you were doing other things and you got to notice the power, even if there is simplicity in it. I think that might be why it's easy to stray because it's written there in a hundred words and the, you know, the, the magic or even the complexity is a lot of times in the execution of it. Yeah. I mean, and it's just holistic. It's comprehensive, right? It, like it's the, that again, back to fitness. It's not, it's not just measuring your orange splashes or whatever. It's not, um, Fuck those splashes. totally, totally subjective of like, did you get a good workout? Like, because on, on buys, buys and tries day, because your buys and tries are pumps, you know, um, it's holistic from nutrition to all types of like, met, like what are the ad dimensions of, of fitness? Right. So, um, yeah. I want to be good at everything. You yeah, know? Like, I I think that's a really that's the that's the selling point for me. I think for CrossFit and for and especially for you know the general population. I think it's you know it's it's right for it's CrossFit's for anyone. It's not for everyone. Understood, but like the the idea that you would go to a a personal trainer you know at a at a commercial gym like you know a cscs and you're just like hey i want you to like get me in good physical get me in the best physical shape like you can and like what would that program look like and that person might might make your standard traditional eight week you know program that has the upper body lower body split and buys and tries and maybe there's some cardio mixed in or whatever and then it's like it's like okay, so it's three by ten bicep curls and leg extensions, and maybe there's a lunge or a back squat in there. But it's like, what are you going to do? What 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 about the next eight weeks? It's like I don't know. We'll we'll make the program then. It's like, well, what about the next eight weeks? And that's not to say that a a personal trainer couldn't make a you know sixteen twenty four or even you know a fifty two week plan. But I like it doesn't happen that doesn't happen and and people like there's that that is not a that's not a long-term solution to the problem of you know fitness over a lifetime whereas what you yeah, described that, and- that that kind of holistic approach is like that like crossfit encompasses everything you, the 100 words of fitness is literally like 100 words like if you knew nothing else about fitness but understood the 100 words of fitness you would know more than you know most people with a fucking masters of exercise science degree yeah biceps aren't gonna help me um, split board in the back country and you know for six hours and climb mountains and snowboard right like focusing on biceps on monday right without the breathing aspect of it i don't care I mean, you can even back squat 600 pounds, but if you can't <laughs> cover a mile in under 12 minutes, then like we're, we're, you know, that's just, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. At least I spent like my, I don't know, from age 13 or 14 to 22, basically training to run faster and hit a baseball further and mm-hmm. eh, didn't really do that well in doing that. I did CrossFit for six to nine months, went to a tournament nice. in the fall, and thank you, Hunter, um, and was hitting a baseball significantly further and running way faster than I ever had in my entire life. So, like, everything that I knew and we knew about strength and conditioning and power, um, so much of that GPP element was missing. And that just comes to mind because, again, you had that basis for comparison, same thing as me. And then I moved out to Colorado and started hiking and had the opposite realization that you obviously had as well. And it was like, okay, there are other pieces to this puzzle that I have to figure out. But it's it's so cool when someone gets that um, true basis of comparison to just be like, okay, like I don't even know, need to know if I'm a gym goer. I don't even really even need to know why or how. But I'm going to keep going to this place because like it, it, back then I was following dot com, like real simple, like seven by one shoulder press. If that's what it was, that's what I was doing. Um, so and that was the only thing that I was doing. So you know to think that that's possible with that after trying to uncover every possible rock in strength and conditioning is pretty fucking cool 
yeah, trust the process. Fall in love with the routine. You know, it's super cliche, but it's um, everything has been built on routines. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm really good at routines and habits. I uh, spent probably the first half of my life doing the bad ones, you know, <laughs> team sports aside and, you know, that kind of stuff. But a lot of unproductive, uh, destructive um, habits and kind of flipped it on its head. You know, kids will do that. Family will do that. Purpose will do that. Having a, a, a greater purpose. But um, I always knew the power of habits. Um, it's just building, building the good ones, you know. So, Jesse, kind of my... My last kind of wrap up question here is so is this is it possible for a master for or for an athlete to follow let's say team misfit affiliate programming do what it says you know listen to your body get enough sleep do do the math sessions don't skip the accessory work basically do what the program asks of you And then, you know, have your own personal life reasonably dialed in. You're a father of two. You own an affiliate. You're not a, you know, you're not just, you're not, I I don't, I don't know what your financial situation is, but you're, you're clearly working, you know, you know, you're clearly working and aren't solely dedicating your life to training, which begs the question, like, is that fucking possible? Because it seems like every year we get further into the sport it there are more athletes especially more at the individual level but you know there aren't too many masters who are in you know the individual levels boat most of them are like you they full-time job wife kids you know it's like training is priority number maybe between three and five potentially for them is it you know is it possible for someone to qualify for the crossfit games following team misfit affiliate programming specifically but an affiliate program well, I did. So, yeah. I mean, short answer, yes. Um, <laughs> That's sick. We'll call it there. All right, late. No. Yeah. <laughs> and cut. Uh, you know, a lot of fine print, you know, obviously. I, I think you got to have the foundational stuff. I uh, mentioned it earlier. Like, you got to have a certain foundational strength. Um, you can build strength for sure, you know. And I did. I PR'd things like my double snatch, two rep max snatch, you know, like right before the open. It was awesome. Um, didn't think my goal at this point was like to snatch two wheels through my forties. That's kind of like once a year, right? Like annually hit 225 once a year, um, to pull a double at 230 this Same. year, like was sick, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, that was a big deal and unexpected. Right. Um, so i ob- like, obviously things I can still, you can still build strength, but I think you got to have the skills covered. Um, or be putting in a little bit of the extra, you know, five minutes after class to, to make sure you're brushing up and have the, the foundation. Um, I don't know, man. Like, my, my goal at this point, like, just to outlast the competition, <laughs> you know, consistency. <laughs> Let them all die off until there's, like, ten of us left. I don't know. Fuck. You know, like, I don't, I don't take it. <laughs> Like part that's of what I'm waiting for too. That's why that's that's why I do it, right? We do it like we do it for longevity. You know, back to the methodology stuff. Um, I'm doing it for longevity. I'm doing it. Uh, consistency is super important. Um, I, I realize now, even the older I get, it's like the more days I take off, the more kind of sore and stiff. I tell my athletes all the time, it's like I'm I'm not a ten man, you know, like and I rust up if I don't move, you know, like, um, so like getting to the gym for me is my, you know, squeak, squeak oil can. Um, but yes, I believe that there is enough volume, enough programming, the right programming, the right mix. Um, that's one of the things I always tout, like when I explain why, why we offer misfit programming here is like, it's the, 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 Wait, like the volume waves, you know, it's like light day, heavy day, you know, like time to recover there, sweat, like rotating through, um, to keep the intensity up through the week, like day in, day out. You're not like, like by Friday, just kind of getting going through motions. So yeah, yeah, I believe it's possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's like, well, I'll, I'll kind of st- kick the my the final thoughts off here with mine that that's such an important point we i i sent out an email uh, a couple weeks ago or a couple whatever uh to the gym about just just rest days period um and part of it is like an educational thing like hey like rest days were and are built in or intended to be built into the crossfit 
you know, the CrossFit methodology. There's a reason dot com still does three on one off, two on one off, and have since fucking t- you know two thousand when it was a CrossFit.com was a yellow screen that took like 10 minutes to load and had a six pixel WMV video attached to it. But it was like, that's what it was then. That's what it is now. Our, even our most competitive athletes are taking at least one full rest day and, you know, one other, whether it's an active recovery day or, a or, a you know, doing a math session. And, and some, for some folks, it's not, it's, you know, it is two rest days just because of how necessary that is the training is potent and when you start thinking that adding volume is the uh the answer to improving your fitness it's like it can be but what needs to come with that is the balance on the other side of that you don't just get to stack a rock on one side of the scale and assume that the scale is going to stay balanced and we get athletes who i don't know when the last day they took a rest day is like the gym is not open seven days a week because we want you working out seven days a week it's because we're a fucking business <laughs> and not everybody can work out on the same days like that's that's the straight up answer so i think what you what you rounded out here and just like a an athlete who has a competitive who has a you know a base of fitness and i think that's not a, that's important to not skip over you do have you did have a really solid foundation of fitness you didn't go from zero to crossfit games in six months um but you did do it correctly in the sense that you know we did the appropriate volume we took rest when we needed to we did plug in the necessary things that are uh, you know both programmed in like the mf2 work but also you know the five minutes after class making sure that you're not the tin man the next day all of those things contribute and over a long enough period of time that snowball grows and gets bigger and bigger and lands you at the crossfit games um not going to be how it shakes out for everybody but yeah but i mean but it is possible and it and it's like that guy did it jesse did it (laughs) i have a selfish final question before my final thoughts um i googled your the town that your gym is in and i see a lot of mountain porn which is um, something I'm very into. What is it like living there? Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. <sighs> um, you know, no, it's sure. National Park is 35 <laughs> sucks. minutes away from here. <laughs> sucks. Um, yeah, Glacier National Park. Any any sport or any outdoor activity, fishing, crafting, um, lots of lakes. Where do you, I like water Where do you a lot. snowboard? Uh, Whitefish Resort. Um, okay. There's another smaller one called Blacktail, um, but yep. ski at Whitefish, which is amazing. Um, uh, really cool there too. Like, well, they uh, almost encourage like side country access and skinning inbounds, and I don't know designated uphill routes. So that's always a fun active recovery day. Is just climbing, climbing the mountain, skinning it just for fun, little hour skin. Yeah. Um, but what the fuck yeah, does that I mean? mean uh, uh, skinning is uphill, <laughs> uphill, like, uh, touring on skis. So you put the, yeah, the stuff with glue on it. It's like seal fur, like synthetic seal fur, but directional, um, hair basically on the bottom of your skis sticks with glue basically allows you to ski uphill. Um, so you don't slide backwards. You take a step, don't stick on the snow. You can walk up the mountain on your skis and then take it off at the top and ski down like normal, but it allows you to ski. Uphill. I was not Walk fucking uphill. tracking on that as a thing. <laughs> I'd never heard of that either. Yeah. No. Yeah. Alpine touring. <laughs> Check oh it out. Goodness, it's cool. These guys. Split these boards, guys. snowboards come apart and let you do. Yeah, the same Hunter. Thing. They you yeah. put it back together to become a snowboard too. The skis. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. It's the fucking goddamn matrix out there. But it's an it is it's an outdoor paradise. <laughs> um, super fun. Always something fun. To, you know, or active to do outside. So lots of wilderness. Good stuff. So my final thoughts, um, a lot of my admiration for these two gentlemen here comes from the idea of um, walking the walk and talking the talk. They just provide such an excellent example for our communities here in Maine. Um, So my final thoughts are literally just a thank you to you. The more people there are out there that are shepherding these communities, but also showing the way in terms of, you know, your actions, your behaviors, all of that stuff. I think it means a lot to the misfit community. I think it means a lot to the CrossFit community at large. So just a thank you from, from me to you for, um, you know, continuing, continuing to carry the torch because again, setting the example 
is such a powerful element of something, right? Like if we just had the, the pukey, the clown, or, or we had the hundred words of fitness, but you know, didn't do any of these things, it would be really hard to get people to sort of buy into all of it. So thank you for, for doing that for the, both the misfit community and the CrossFit community. I think we all do it because we care, you know, like, um, here to serve like i've made a whole career shift it's like i want to serve and help others um get it you know like uh just spread it spread the goodness so yeah i think that's been part of the surprise of this whole games thing it's like i haven't um wanted to focus on myself i've just been trying to to walk the walk you know Um, it's funny how that works right um and it happens, you know? And so part of the surprise is just like, oh, this oh shit moment is like, how do I now, I, I, you know, like, let's be realistic. I'm not trying to win the games. Um, don't expect to. Um, and I'm realistic enough to realize that it's not going to happen. But I'd also want to put my forth my best effort. So part of this oh shit moment is like, how do I switch gears a little bit to start focusing a little bit more on myself for the next few months? Um, train up as much as I can. Um, but a lot of us just keep doing the things I've been doing, right, that have gotten me here and continued the improvements. Um, exactly. Stay healthy. Make sure I'm as healthy as I possibly can be going into um, that weekend. My final thoughts are just congrats, man. It's a pretty cool accomplishment. Thanks, a lot man. going on in your life. Pretty cool to have that be, you know, icing on the cake with everything else going on. So congratulations. My All final right, thoughts, thank you guys. Yeah, do it, Jesse. You know, my my <laughs> final thoughts just thanks to you guys. Um, you know, you're doing you're doing it. So you're thanking me, Drew, but like thank you guys because um I have an example from you guys to follow. So we're all trying to set examples <laughs> for each other. But thank you guys. Appreciate your time. That's awesome, man. dude. Yeah, we really do. Um all right, ladies and gents, that is a wrap on today's episode. Uh, if you are interested in getting on the program that sent Jesse Williams from October finishing up laying floor mats and building rigs to I'm, I need to fucking figure out what to do to get ready for the CrossFit Games, uh, teammisfit.com for your affiliate programming needs. You can follow it on or find it on SugarWad or StreamFit as well. Um, we've got free, free sample weeks on there, right, Ted? If I'm not mistaken free sample weeks free trials on sugar wad and stream fit um but yeah jesse it was great to have you man we'll be in touch for Talk sure soon. and uh best of luck in in training getting ready for alabama thanks dude keep doing thanks buddy 